Hey everybody, how's it going? I hope you're all having a lovely day. Do you ever find that there are people that have this gut decision that they want to make? It's like in their gut or their heart, and they wind up using their brain to rationalize doing something really stupid because it's just that they can pretend that they're doing it for a good reason. Like, one, you know, one example is I, you know, I, I forget the name of this financial show and it's gonna piss me off because I know I'm gonna remember it, right? Like five seconds after I'm done doing the video. But there was somebody who was talking about how he had a truck that had worked for like 20 or five years or so. He did, and he, and he said he wanted to buy a new one because he got he had a bad, better gas mileage, even though his old one worked just fine. And the new truck that he got was about sixty or $70,000. And he drove this thing less than 100 miles a week. So in order for him to recoup the savings and gas mileage, I mean, this is this would, I don't know, probably like a century or something to recoup the, the savings, even though that person was in debt. Or another one was somebody who made $30,000 a year, had approximately twenty to 40000 in debt. I don't remember exactly. Had something like one or 2000 bucks in their bank account. And they bought a new car for around $25,000 instead of purchasing a used car, or dare I say it, a beater. And what they told themselves is, I need to buy that because, quote, a used car is not as safe. You know, so, and they started talking about all the new safety features included in new cars, which is technically true. They started explaining how they work, technically true, uh, all that stuff. But at the end of the day, they were using that to paint a picture that if I get a car that's four years old, that is not going to be safe. And that that is the priority when you're like 30,000 in debt, with like a 30,000 or so salary, and you have no money. And I think a lot of people do this, myself included, which is they will intellectualize a bad decision and convince themselves that it's actually not a bad decision because of X, Y, and Z. When anybody else can zoom out and go, bro, what are you doing? I've most certainly done this before, and I've caught myself right before I did it with my own phone. And one of the things I wanted to talk about today is how when it comes to right to repair, I think that at the end of the day, you know, we can blame lobbyists and we can blame manufacturers. But at the end of the day, I think one of the true red pills is that manufacturers that keep us from being able to fix our own stuff are actually giving us an excuse to do something that we shouldn't be doing. You know, like that bad habit of you're depressed and you raid the cookie jar and you eat a bunch of Oreos instead of making yourself a good meal and having, you know, getting some exercise and talking to friends. Everybody has that inside of them, that desire to do the wrong. You know it's the wrong thing in the moment. It'll give you some short-term joy, but some long-term pain. And one of the ways that we can do that is by spending money on new things that we do not need, that do not serve us, simply because you get a quick dopamine rush and it feels good in the moment. And, you know, there are ways that if manufacturers make it more difficult to repair what you have, you now have a reason to intellectualize making a bad decision in buying something new. I caught myself doing this and like, you know, I have a channel, 1.7 million subscribers talking about repair. And I have, a, you know, I, this is my smartphone over here. So this is a Samsung S10e. I love this phone. It genuinely does everything I need. It isn't slow. It runs all the applications I want. It doesn't lag. It really does what I want. It's a nice screen, nice camera, everything. I wanted a phone with, you know, pretty much three, three requirements. The first is that it actually fit in my hand because no modern phone fits in my hand anymore. I want to be able to grab something that's on the upper left corner without having to hold my phone awkwardly like this and hope I don't drop it or have to use my other hand. I want it to fit in my hand. Second thing is I want it to have a headphone jack. This is a shotgun microphone. It does not require an external preamp. I don't have to use something like a Zoom H1N and then another cable to, so I can plug this microphone into my phone with adapters. It just does this. So it makes it really easy to do a video while I'm on the go or a stream on the go where people can hear me and it clips into the phone. I cannot use this with a dongle because if I have a dongle then it's not gonna mount on the phone like this and I lose the ergonomic benefit. And it also has this windscreen. I'm gonna call it a windscreen instead of a dead cat in case Mr. Clinton is watching. He gets kind of sensitive when I use that term. He really hates when I browse the B&H website and I see that everywhere. But so that if I'm doing a video outside, you don't just hear a bunch of wind noise, which has ruined videos in the past that I had to delete instead of upload. It allows you to actually hear me. The third is that it has a removable storage, removable micro SD card, so I can unplug it, plug it into my computer, not have to deal with the absolute cancer that is MTP. I hate MTP, it's shit. I love being able to upgrade the storage. If I want more storage, I can put more storage in here without having to buy a new phone. And this was the only thing at the time that fit all of those requirements. It works great. I got this thing used for about $290, which is an insanely good deal. And I, I, I genuinely love this phone. It does everything I need. I have no reason to upgrade it. And the battery has not been working that great recently because it's getting kind of old. You know, that's what happens when you use a phone as much as I do, the battery goes out. Also, since I've admittedly at times, it's this is totally my fault. I've been very, you know, rough when plugging this headphone jack in and out, or headphone plug uh, microphone in and out, that 
the headphone jack on this is kind of screwed up. So I was looking into getting a new battery and a new headphone jack for it, which is the sensible thing to do. You, know, you get a headphone jack for like five or 10 bucks, get a battery and a, a new back for it in case I break, break the back on this for about like 20 bucks and put 40 minutes of time in and it'll work. And I saw that I was looking online for 300, 400, $800 phones. And I was looking at all these phones and I was debating getting a new one. Now, when I look at all these phones, I'm not someone that's going to benefit from the newer features and functionality on these devices. I don't care. I don't care about the better processor. This phone is fast enough as is. I don't run Prime 95 on it. And the only way a better processor would do anything is if I were doing YouTube streaming on the phone and I could adjust the preset that I was using for my encoder. The YouTube app does not allow you to adjust the encoder settings, so a faster processor does me no good. You know, uh, I don't care about a bigger screen because that makes it more difficult to use the phone. I don't need higher resolution. Like I mean, the fact that we have over 1080p resolution on a screen that's four or five inches is ridiculous as is. The screen on it is fine. The camera is fine. This phone has three cameras on it, which is two cameras more than I actually need to do video. So I really have no need for a phone with five or eight or 20 cameras. Um, you know, the camera quality on it is more than good enough, given that I'm not a professional photographer and this channel is not known for its, uh, its production values. This does everything that I need. I have no need for something new. And I was this close to buying a new phone that may have cost six or $800, which is a really dumb financial decision. And it went something like this. I thought, what if the battery that I get is bad? I can't buy the battery directly from Samsung. Samsung is a parts website and they do not have the battery for this phone right now. What if it's bad? What if I crack the back when I'm removing this? What if it doesn't sit flush anymore? What if the adhesive doesn't work very nicely? I despise having to deal with, you know, scraping off old adhesive and putting on new. Like, it's so annoying. I just have flashbacks to like the A1237 and A1304 MacBook Air bezels. Oh my God, you spend so much time trying to get all the old adhesive off so that it sits perfectly flush and it's this it's, it's aggravating. You know, so I kind of intellectualized by saying, what, a, and what if the battery is not as good? Don't you want something that has a known good? What if it's a pain in the ass to do? What if you break the back? And it's like, wait, what the F are you talking about? Buy a new back. The back to this fucking phone is like $8. Buy it along with the battery. It's way cheaper than buying another one. You like this phone, don't you? Just do it. And I found myself doing this thing where I intellectualized the process of getting a new one. At one point, the point that I caught myself was when I said, that phone may have some better technologies. And it's like, that's where, I, that's where I knew that I was on some bullshit because I couldn't actually point to any particular technology. There were none of, the, the, none of them matter to me. I don't care about a camera having one more megapixel. I don't care about it being mildly faster. None of that matters. It's not, it, it's not a giant leap. It's a, just a, mi we have these very, very tiny minor incremental changes now when it comes to smartphones that people pretend are the, are the you know, the, I forget what I was talking about, but anyway, if I'm smart, I'll edit that out. You know, there's really not much difference between last generation and this generation. It's not like we're going from the iPhone 2 to the iPhone 5, where there's all these crazy changes and great leaps. It's, this really isn't. And I was this close to doing that. I started to intellectualize doing what I wanted to do in my gut. I wanted a new toy. I wanted a shiny new thing that I could open. I wanted something new and pretty and whatever. And People do this with everything. They do it with cars, they do it with shoes, they do it with fashion, and admittedly phones nowadays are more about fashion than they are about technology when it comes to the, you know, the incremental advancements we're seeing. And sometimes I do it too. <laughs> I was as close to doing it with this device. And at the end of the day, the manufacturer doesn't need to make it impossible to repair to get us to not fix our old stuff and just buy new. They just need to make it mildly more difficult. The reason for that is because inside of all of us, there is that desire when we are depressed at the end of the night to, instead of have a talk with a friend and work things out or whatever, to run over to the cookie jar and eat a bunch of Oreos. And the financial or the technological version of doing that is my phone has a very minor problem. It needs me to unplug the headphone jack, plug another one in and replace the battery. And uh, instead of do that, I am going to run to the cookie jar and eat, you know, 3000 calories of Oreos, or in this case, buy a new phone at 600 to a thousand dollars when this one literally just needs a battery. And you know, anything that 
will allow us to make it seem like it's not us making that bad decision. Listen, it's not me that wanted to do it. They made it harder to replace the battery. So see, now I have to go into debt to buy a new phone. Or, you know, listen, it's not me that wanted to buy a new car. I didn't want to buy a new car. It's just that this one had a problem with the oil. And so, you know, I had to spend $25,000 on a new car instead of take this one to the mechanic because the, me- the mechanic was closed yesterday and, uh, and what if the oil they put in is not good? Like, y- you know when you're bullshitting yourself. You know when you're bullshitting yourself. But we all do it when we have this thing that we want to do in our gut. We find a way with our brain to rationalize it and make it seem like it's okay. No, it's not stupid that you wasted a bunch of money on something for no good reason. No, keep doing that. Keep doing that. And I, you know, I was very close to doing that with this. And if I was close to doing that with my own phone, when this is literally what I've done for a living for the past 13 years, I can only imagine how many other people do the exact same damn thing all over the place. How often have you justified getting something new because it may have been mildly inconvenient, not impossible, not even difficult, just mildly inconvenient to fix the old one? At the end of the day, manufacturers most certainly make things more difficult to repair. But there is a symbiosis there. There's a There's a mutually beneficial relationship where when the manufacturer makes it difficult for you to repair your old product, what they are doing is they are taking away your guilt and your agency when you say, well, listen, I didn't want to get a new one, but I guess I have to because they made me. I think that's something to look at. Have you ever done this? Have you ever bought another one where, like, to be honest, you really didn't need to? You just kind of bullshitted yourself into doing it? And do you believe that the manufacturer is somewhat complicit in making it easier for you to do that? Very curious. Let me know in the comments down below. That's it for today. And as always, I hope you learned something. I am excited to get myself a new headphone jack and have headphone plugs so people in the live channel Don't keep screaming about static when I plug this microphone in and a new battery so that it doesn't go to 54% on my desk when I'm not even doing anything with it. That's it for today. And as always, I hope you learned something. I'll see you all in the next video. Bye now.